Hey Booktube, what's up? My name is Juan, I am Just One Reader, and today I want to review and discuss The Dumb House by John Burnside. But before I get into what this book is about and what my opinion was, I want to share the first paragraph with you so that you can get a taste of the writing. I think this opening paragraph, it's a little bit long, but it's great in my opinion because it tells us about the writing, it tells us about the story, it tells us about the protagonist and the horrific things that he has done. And it's the kind of narration, the, 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 it's the kind of book very much like The Perfume by Patrick Suskind um, or The Goldfinch by Donna Tart that begin, you know, the, the, the narrative begins with a character telling us the ending of the book and then working their way back into you know what it was that led this uh these things to happen or also the, the secret history by donna tart it's the same structure um so yeah this is the opening paragraph no one could say it was my choice to kill the twins any more than it was my decision to bring them into the world each of these events was an inevitability one thread in the fabric of what might be called destiny, for want of a better word, a thread that neither I nor anyone else could have removed without corrupting the whole design. I chose to perform the laryngotomies, if only to halt their constant singing, if singing is what you would call it, that ululation that permeated my waking hours and entered my sleep through every crevice of my dreams. At the time, though, I would have said it was a logical act, another step in the research I had begun almost four years before, the single most important experiment that a human being can perform, to find the locus of the soul, the one gift that sets us apart from the animals, to find it first by act of deprivation and then later by logical and necessary destruction. It surprised me how easy it was to operate on those two half-realized beings. They existed in a different world, the world of laboratory rats, or the shifting and functionless space of the truly autistic. So that was the opening paragraph. Now let's talk about the piece itself. The Dumb House was published in 1997 originally by John Burnside, who is a very celebrated Scottish author. This book, however, was recently revived or brought back to the attention of the general audience by Miss Jen Campbell, who I totally adore, and everyone in Booktube, I'm, I'm sure, has heard of her. Um, so she was really the one that we could we could call responsible for bringing Burnside into the general demand, or the, the, the general um, the general demand, and, and the general audience, uh, at least here in Booktube. I'm not really sure how popular this book is um, outside of Booktube, but uh, talking about our community, I feel like this is one of the most talked about books in this genre. So what genre is this? It was very difficult for me to establish that because some people have mentioned or have claimed this book to, to be a part of the horror genre or mystery but I don't think so. I think it's more of a literary fiction with uh, with this kind of uh, genre-bending quality that some books have. Um, and so I think it's very hard to classify, but that's really not the most important thing about this book. This book is about a man whose name we only find out is uh, Luke, but we find this until the very end of the book, really. And he's never really called by anyone and I think that's something really ironic that this book is about language uh, amongst many things but this is I mean one of the main topics uh, uh, discussed in this novel is language and we never see the character addressed by his name by anyone also it's ironic to me that this book is very much about language and uh, there's barely any dialogue or conversations in this book. It's a piece that reads like a very long, big monologue. It is a monologue in a way. Uh, it's the protagonist himself explaining and, and sort of uh, narrating the history 
of this experiment that he has done with his children and all the events in his life that have led up to that experiment that is discussed in the first uh, opening paragraph that I read out loud to you. So it's, it's really almost like uh, the perfume or the goldfinch or a little life in, in the way that it, it tells you the story of uh, someone's life. It's a very uh, biographical feeling kind of book and you really get to uh, you really get to experience this character. He is a very interesting, complex character that I absolutely loved. I found fascinating. Um, he is by no means a likable character. He is a deeply sick character. And I mean that um, in, in, a, in a professional way. I, I don't mean it in a bad way, like he's a sick character. He's a deeply, deeply sick character ill character. Um, and, and that brings me to another point that I wanted to mention in my review. Uh, in, in a couple of years, or probably one year, I will teach psychology in college. And this is one of those books that I would love to teach or use as an example for my, for my courses. Because I think that uh, the, the protagonist in this book is it's just a, a great case uh, even though it is literary, and I know that lit liter literary cases cannot really reflect 100% what what happens in reality, um, and we cannot interpret or analyze fictional characters as one would analyze a patient. However, literature has always helped uh, psychologists and psychoanalysts, psychoanalysts, sorry, psychoanalysts um, discuss the human condition and the human mind and the human um, apparatus. So uh, this is one of those books that I find are going to be really helpful for teaching because uh, in my opinion, this is a great case of uh, the psychotic experience. It's very different to the antisocial disorder or what we would call psychopathy or sociopathy. Um, for example, the novel American Psycho by Bret Easton Ellis, which I haven't yet read, but from what I've heard and the amazing reviews that I've seen uh, and listened to, that man, Patrick Bateman, that character is much more uh, a psychopath or a sociopath or an antisocial uh, disorder case. Whereas this one, even though he also does some really uh, psychopathic acts of violence and crime and murder and horrible things, probably uh, just as horrible or even worse than the things that Patrick Bateman does. This is a, a case of psychosis in my professional, my personal opinion. Of course, we can have different opinions, but in my opinion, this is a much more complicated, much more severe, regressive case of, uh, of a very fragmented personality with a very narcissistic personality um so yeah enough of the psycho babble i'm sorry i can get really uh, i can i can talk about uh analyzing things all day long so getting back to this book i think this book has something for everyone it is very 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 well written i found myself in all of John Burnside's writing in, in his sentences. He has a very easy style. It's, it's a very easy book to read, but it's very hard to stomach. And I love that because it was a very enjoyable reading experience, but it was an experience of dread and of torment. And I, I, I think, and maybe this is a little bit more psycho babble, I'm sorry, but I really feel that when you read this, you have to regress back into those psychotic states of, you know, those primal instincts and urges that we all had very early on in life. And however repressed they may be now, uh, this type of literature brings them back and it brings us back to those very early stages in our life. And it's it's that's why this book is so uncomfortable and awkward and horrible and and truly ter speechless it leaves you speechless because the anxieties that are described here and the urges that this protagonist has don't necessarily 
or cannot necessarily find their way into language. They cannot be properly symbolized through language. Maybe I'm talking nonsense. Maybe this book has made me nonsensical for a moment, but that's the effect that, that this book has. This is a psychotic experience in terms of reading. As a reader, you have to regress into this psychotic state. So that's part of the fun, but it's also part of the challenge. Now, talking about the literature in here, I think this book is filled with literary moments. It's a very good novel, in my opinion. This is the type of literary fiction that I love because it's, like I said, it's easy to read in like the surface level, but there's so much to be explored and there's an opportunity in every page to read critically and to think and to ponder and to um, talk about philosophy and to talk about language and people and our human condition, what makes us human and what makes us not human and what gives us life. And there's just, this is such a, an interesting, fascinating book. Um, I, I, I didn't really say anything about the plot or um, the details of, of what happens in this book, because I think this is a book that is best uh, reading without really having a lot of information about, because it is so dark and horrifying. And the last thing that I want to say is that this book constantly surprised me. I read it very quickly. It's 200 pages long, and I read it in a span of maybe three or four days, which for me is very fast reading. Uh, I know that some people who are fast enough readers can read this or will be able to read this in one day or two sittings or something like that. It's very, very fast paced. It's very enjoyable, even though it's completely disgusting um, and, and, and horrifying. Uh, the, the dynamic for me of this book was uh, it started and then something awful started happening. And then finally it was over and there was this like tiny room for stability and balance and then again something even worse ha happened and then some stability and some balance and then something again so it was like constant equilibrium and disequilibrium and i found that dynamic to be so interesting and fascinating so uh that was my review on the dumb house by john burnside i know i didn't really say anything about the book just my experience reading it um, but that's what I wanted to do. So tell me if you have read this book, if you want to read this book, if you are interested in this book, or whatever your opinion may be about this novel. Um, now, just before I wrap this up, I know that John Burnside, and I know this because Jen Campbell interviewed him, I know that this is not his favorite novel that he's written. His favorite novel is called The Glister, which I think is his fourth or fifth novel. So um, I'm going to read that as soon as I can. He is truly an interesting author and I loved his writing style. He has this um, way of being really concise and he packs a lot in just 200 pages. So he's my kind of author. Now I would give this book a four star rating because I still felt that something was a little bit missing for me to give it five stars. So I would give it a four, 4.5, absolutely recommended. Perfect read for Halloween, John Burnside's The Dumb House.